you know, uh, in the realty world, uh, things change year to year. Uh, we've seen a ton of changes in the last two years or whatever since we've yeah, been doing these podcasts. Have. Now, I'd like to know about this year's spring market compared to last year's spring market. Yeah, so what I've gathered here is all of the uh, all of the data basically from the beginning of the year up through now and the same for last year okay. know, up through 520. Um, one of the biggest differences is... Are back john brodeen realty expert how are you today my friend hey i'm good good it's friday it's friday so fire up that's a good thing yeah you got a busy friday though don't you yeah pretty busy day yeah right. this is gonna be it for me once okay. you're done here today that's... i'm out of here oh man okay <laughs> you got any plans for the weekend um i don't think we've got any like friends in town or anything mm -hmm. i'm trying to think i don't think we really got much going on but you um, know that's not a bad thing once in a while you 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 probably realized after talking to me for a while, it's usually like my wife who plans the stuff. So who knows? I might oh, have some. You got one of those too, huh? Yeah. Your life planner? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I've got my stuff that's set in stone. And then, you know, yep. pretty much every Sunday I go over to my parents' place and have lunch with mm -hmm. them and see them, my sister. But um, well, you know, the weather isn't supposed to be that great this weekend. So, yeah. you know, maybe it's a good weekend not to have much going on. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. You know, uh, in the realty world, uh, things change year to year. Uh, we've seen a ton of changes in the last two years or whatever since we've yeah, been doing these podcasts. Have. Now, I'd like to know about this year's spring market compared to last year's spring market. Yeah, so what I've gathered here is all of the uh, all of the data basically from the beginning of the year up through now and then the same for last year okay. know, up through 520. Um, one of the biggest differences is fewer homes have sold and fewer homes have pended. At this point in 2021, 273 homes had closed and 368 homes had gone pending. This year, it's down quite a bit. It's down to 241 sold and 340 pending. So that's down by, you know, uh, over 30 sales and, um, you know, 28 pendings. So that could be due to the higher interest rates that have slowed down the demand a little bit. But then the other thing that's going on is inventory is actually even lower this year than it was last year, which that's one of the most important things in a housing market. How many houses are available? How many houses are for sale compared to how many homes are selling each month? Mm -hmm. And so even though the amount of activity is down, the number of listings is down pretty substantially. The number of new listings that hit the market. Um, oh, wait a minute. It was, uh, I gave the wrong number for pendings. It was 370 last year and it was 308 this year. Um, 340 new listings have hit the market this year versus 368. And if you add up all the active listings during this time period, there have been uh, 453 active listings this year, you know, year to mm -hmm. date. Um, compared to last year, there was 528. So listings are down for sure. Um, and what's interesting is with the inventory being lower, even though activity has been slightly lower, it's still causing prices to go up. Um, this is a pretty small sample size. It's less than half the year, so it can be skewed by a few things. Mm -hmm. um, but despite fewer sales going through, um, actually more sales volume has gone through by only like 300 grand. 67 million, 302,000 worth of real estate has been sold so far this year. And last year it was 67 million, uh, 39,332. So, uh, Fewer sales, but the prices have been higher. Sure. Now it's hard to tell if that's just been generally mm -hmm. higher end home selling or if the actual uh, prices are rising. But the median sale price has gone up quite a bit. Um, at this point last year, uh, out of all the sales, it was 225. And the median sale price this year, out of all the sales up through today, is 261.9. So that's a pretty big jump. That's a big jump. Yeah. And that's the median, which is probably your most reliable source the average is easier to be skewed by uh, a couple high sales mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. the average sale price has gone up uh, from last year 245 565 uh, to 279 263 now the other thing is during the springtime last year uh, prices you know when we checked at the end of the year uh, the average and the median were much higher than this um, you know at the end of the year at 2021 um, the average was like 262 and the median was like 245 so prices rose as the year went on last year quite mm -hmm. a bit the second half of the year sales were higher than the first half of the year um, but it appears that you know things are going up even beyond that um, with the first half of this year 
average days on market has been quite low, 96 days on market total average um, for the closings this year. Last year was 131 days on market. So um, this is also due to low inventory. Things are selling much faster. And this doesn't mean it's taking people on average 96 days to accept an offer and get a deal together. It's taking them 96 days on average to list the house, accept an offer, go through the contract to closing process, and then close. So they're sitting on the market for around 50 days before they're accepting an offer on average. Some houses are sitting for a longer time. Some houses are sh sitting for a much shorter time. Mm -hmm. um, the other big thing you'll notice this year is the original list to sale price ratio is actually higher. Sellers are getting a higher percentage of their full asking price than they were last year. This year, it's 98.53%. Last year, it's 97.73%. That's pretty interesting. And then the sale to list price ratio, which measures how much sellers are negotiating down from what their listing price is at the time that the offer is written, not the original listing price. So mm -hmm. this could be their price after a few price reductions or whatever. Uh, this year, it's 99.40, which is very high. Last year, it was 98.52. So all of this stuff uh, is pretty interesting. Um, you know, it's, it, it's possible after this year, we'll see price growth start to slow a little bit. Um, but the other side of the whole high interest rates thing is it might keep some buyers on the sideline. It might price some buyers out of the market. Mm -hmm. But we also need more inventory to hit for the market to shift. And for all those homeowners out there that would maybe be thinking about moving up into something bigger and better, when interest rates are high and maybe they've got a 3.5% interest rate locked in on their house right now, it's kind of hard for them to want to move if they're going to be going from a 3.5% interest rate to a, now a 5.5% right, interest rate right. or something like that. Yeah, two percentage points, that's, that's big. Yeah, yeah, their payment, even if they bought like the same price house, their payment would be about 20% higher. Okay, now, so realty for dummies, who would be me, the dummy, um, a lot of this seems like it has to do with inventory. Yep. I mean, less houses, of course, they're going to sell probably quicker because there's less out there and they're probably going to sell for more. Yeah. But I know we talked a lot last year about uh, inventory or lack of. Yeah. Now, does that, as you being a realty expert, does that make you nervous when, when we keep talking about uh, low inventory? Um, so if you look at the reasons for it, it, it's, it makes a lot of sense. So millennials are the largest uh, group by age, by population. Right? Mm -hmm. So it's the largest group of the population are millennials. That's people who are aged like uh, 26 through 41, mm -hmm. I believe. So um, what is what is the age of people who are buying their first house? Well, it's people in that age group. Sure, sure. And it's such a large group that it it's no surprise that demand is quite high. Mm -hmm. um, and then um, you've got a few different factors coming in that are causing... Uh, that's causing interest rates to be low, but the, the biggest, or not interest rates, sorry, uh, that's causing inventory to be so low. Um, probably the biggest thing though, is there's just not enough supply to keep up with the demand. Uh, they, you know, with all the issues um, with supply chain and uh, materials prices and all mm -hmm. that kind of stuff, they, you know, you're not seeing building uh, new houses at the rate that it would have to be to satisfy the demand. Um, you know, demand's just sky high because you've got a lot of those people buying houses right now. Are we going to see less houses being built this spring and summer, do you think? No, I, I see the supply chain stuff eventually working itself out and building prices coming back down, you know, eventually to mm -hmm. normal levels. So I don't think that's a permanent thing. And then building will probably resume. And there are still builders that have never really skipped a beat. Um, you know, prices on new construction homes have gone up to reflect the... Uh, higher building materials and everything, but there's still been a demand for it. So they've still been selling. Okay. So when the inventory is low like this and things are changing, uh, interest rates are, they've gone up at least two points now and in yeah. just recent weeks. But um, does that ever give you a chance to take a little time off then take a deep breath or does that just mean you got to pull up your boots and tighten up the bootstraps a little more? Yeah, no. Um, it's actually a great market for me because I live giving people good news when mm -hmm. I can. And usually when a seller's calling me to uh, help them sell their house, it usually means that they've done very, very well over these past couple of years. Um, and they're, and even people who went on a little bit riskier end of things, and maybe they're selling a little bit early, you know how I usually recommend, you know, staying in your house for at least four or five years. Yep. You know, people who have lived in their house for only two years, I just closed one yesterday, 
where they made a great profit after only living in the house for like two years. Wow. Um, didn't really end up having to do much to it. Just got the market at the right time. And, and can't count on that, of course. But. No. Um, for me, I hate moving. Yeah. I, I just couldn't imagine uh, moving into a house and two years later, uh, moving out of it again. It's kind of what they had planned based on okay. their situation. Um, it was a temporary thing until their uh, new construction home could be ready. Okay. Uh, but yeah, it, it worked out great for them. And it's, you know, in, from 20, like 15 to 2019, if people turn around and sell that fast, they're, they're probably taking a loss on the house sure. after all the costs of selling. Um, you know, because the market just wasn't going up by very much each year. These last couple of years, now it's gone up by, you know, when you combine the appreciation people have gotten over those two years, it's like double digit appreciation. So people are doing really, really well. Um, the one tough part, and I work with more listings than I do buyers. More than 50% of my business is listings mm -hmm. on the listing side. Um, the one thing that's tough about working with buyers right now is we're kind of programmed in our heads as realtors that we're always trying to get our buyer like the best deal and sure. help them buy a house for as cheap as you can possibly buy it for. But right now with buyers, it's almost more, are you able to get them a house or are they losing out on everything? Right, you know? right. Are, are most houses now, uh, when they put a listing price on them uh, with the you know short inventory, uh, are more houses now going for more than yeah. what the asking price is, I would imagine? Yeah, the average house is not, but the houses that are well-priced and um, attractive and you know, well marketed and move in ready, they are definitely going over asking price still. Now, is is there any way to predict interest rates? No, there's really not. Because um, I mean, there might be people right now that are going, wow, look at the interest rates, they're going up again. And I don't know if we can afford this, but um, let's talk to a realtor in hopes that interest rates drop. And, and I'm just wondering if they were to get a hold of you and say, you know, I want to buy something, but the interest rate's got to go back down. What do you tell them? <laughs> you might be waiting a while or, yeah. you know, I, you don't have any answers for that. I actually just did a video on this topic. So there's basically three outcomes. If they're worried about interest rates, um, either three years from now, interest rates are much higher than they are right now. And in that case, you locked in at a lower time. And as long as you're in it for the long haul, um, some people are worried that if interest rates go way up or, or, they're worried that when interest rates go up, prices fall. Mm -hmm. In order for prices to fall, you need the supply and demand, the balance between supply sure. and demand to mm -hmm. swing in the favor of buyers, where there's a lot of houses available for each buyer. So you kind of, so um, just because interest rates can affect buyer demand by a little bit and buyer affordability doesn't mean that the prices are going to drop. And those two things don't correlate. Um, uh, it's not proportional the correlation between higher interest rates and lower prices. So um, if they get in and they buy and interest rates continue to rise, good for them. They've locked in a lower rate than what the rates are going to be in three years. Mm -hmm. If rates stay exactly the same, um, even if values don't go up, if they five years from now, now they've paid off a, a decent amount of their house and they've built equity rather than yep. renting the whole time. Um, now, if interest rates are lower in three years, this is kind of the question you were asking. If interest rates are lower in three years than where they're at right now, does that mean that you bought at the worst possible time? And the answer to that is no, because if rates drop off, you can always refinance. And for people who expect sure. to stay in their house, it usually makes sense for them to mm -hmm. refinance. Mm -hmm. There's some costs associated with refinancing, but you know, if rates drop by a percent and a half, you don't have to stay in that house that much longer right. for the cost of refinancing to be pay paid back and then you're all in the clear and you're, you're, you know, profiting off of that refinance. Do you think, uh, and I don't know if you have an answer for this too, do most people, homeowners, especially if they've owned their homes for a number of years, uh, I would imagine we saw a lot of it last year and the year before, but um, majority of the people end up refinancing their house at one time or another. Yeah. Yeah. I'd say that's unless they, you know, maybe for people who bought during, uh, you know, 20 late, later 2020 and mm -hmm. 2021 or whatever, when the rates were at their very lowest, you might never see rates again that low. Right, um, right. So they might not. But yeah, just it also depends how long people plan to stay in their houses. People who have stayed in over the long term usually take advantage at least once um, of some low rates and get a new interest rate. If you're at the very tail end of your mortgage and you only have a little bit left, you're paying so much principal down with each payment, not very much interest anyway. You know, sometimes for those people, it doesn't even make sense to refinance because they're just so close to the finish. Right, line. right. 
Yeah. Okay. Uh, learned a bunch again today, man. Yeah, good, good. Uh, how does somebody get a hold of realty expert John Brodine? If they want to get to know me a little bit better and stay in, uh, in the know about Grand Forks real estate and the real estate process in general, follow me on uh, Instagram, subscribe to me on YouTube. If people are ready to become a client, they want to make a move in Grand Forks. Uh, my number is 701-213-5428. That's my cell phone. So you can call or text me on that number. You know, it's always fun having you in the studio. I know it'll be a couple of weeks till you're back, but um, have yourself a great weekend. Yeah, all right. And uh, holiday next weekend. Maybe you'll get a couple of days off. Maybe yeah, not. We're getting away to Duluth. So. <laughs> oh, that's right. Yeah. Well, good for you. Yeah, Happy anniversary, that. correct? Yep. All right. Dating anniversary, not wedding anniversary. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's a big everything. thing too, you know. Yeah. yeah. All right. Thank you very much, John. There you go. Berkshire Hathaway bi-weekly podcast in the books with your realty expert, John Brodine. And we will be back on Wednesday with Berkshire Hathaway. Berkshire Hathaway.